We are picking up with the same format from my last video, but today we're looking at some recent pickups that I've made. This time around it felt right to go with chronological order, so the first one we're going to start with here is this Auto Union Type C. The model is by Minichamp, and it represents the 1936 German Grand Prix winning car as driven by Bernd Rosemeyer. This is amongst the oldest representations I have in my collection, although I do have some dating back to the early 1900s. I don't recall exactly, but I'm sure I remember watching videos as a child of John Watson driving cars like this, of the older Mercedes and Auto Unions. So I always had a fondness for these older Grand Prix cars and I wanted to have some in my collection. This is the first one that I've picked up. This was from a time before it was called Formula One and the design of the cars, as you can tell, was very simple at the time. Basically long aerodynamic lozenges with wheels attached. Examples of the Auto Union Type C reached up to 513 horsepower, which was a monstrous figure for the time. But the crazy figure is the 651 foot-pounds of torque at 2,500 RPM coming from the massive 6-litre V16 that's also supercharged. With all this in mind, the standard bodied car as depicted here could reach speeds of over 186 miles per hour, which is simply lunacy for the technology of the time. And all this together just makes it an integral part of my collection. For the second car of this video, we're looking at the 1966 Jaguar XJ13. This model is made by AutoR and represents a prototype that never actually raced. Because of that, this is actually one of the few models in my collection that doesn't actually have a racing livery, but it is a racing vehicle, so that's why I've got it. I think for anybody of my age or below, this car will mostly be known for its recent appearances in the Gran Turismo series, where it sits as a rival to cars such as the Ford GT40 and Ferrari 330T4. Only one prototype was actually made, and unfortunately the original version was crashed during filming a launch video for the E-Type. After the crash, the vehicle was rebuilt, but not considered by Jaguar to be to original specifications. Given what's known of the car, I think AutoArt have produced a good representation of it here, with high quality interior details and good engine detail as well. This was a model I've been wanting for a while and was finally able to get one at a semi-reasonable price at least, so I'm happy to have this in my collection as well. As we progress with the unstoppable march of time, we get to this 1973 Porsche 90803 Spider. This model is made by Spark and represents the winner of the 1973 Kyle Army 9 Hours, which was driven by Reinhold Joost, who was partnered by Herbert Mueller. The Porsche 908 was featured in various body styles throughout its lifetime, running from 1968 all the way up to 1981, where they were introducing turbocharged variants. This model is my latest of five Porsche 908s that I've got in various body styles, and it competed in the Group 5 prototype class for under 5 litre engines. Personally, I find this one of the more appealing shapes of the 908, and Spark's done a great job here with lots of intricate details, including the nice structural details at the rear of the car. This is also one of the earlier Ghost Racing cars, with them probably being most well known for the 956 that they drove to two victories in Le Mans in 1984 and 1985. Kyle Army overall, I would say, is probably a less well known race than some of the others, but it's still a cool car to have in the collection, and I'm happy to be able to share it with you guys in this video. Forging ahead into the 90s, we have this Kyosho representation of the Nissan 300ZX Twin Turbo that ran in the GTS class of the 1994 Daytona 24 Hours, and this number 76 car was actually the overall winner of the event. It was run by Cunningham Racing and was powered by the 3.0-litre V6 Twin Turbo that you would normally get in a 300ZX, but this one was restricted to a mere 750 horsepower. This is another one of the crazy and awesome silhouette cars that ran in IMSA at the time and sits nicely alongside the Mazda RX-7 GTO that I had in my previous video. I'm not really familiar with the drivers that ran in this car beyond Butch Leitzinger and I know that simply because it's a recognisable name that I've heard elsewhere. This is another one of the cars that were in a lot of video games as I was growing up so I developed a fondness of it through that medium. 
Interestingly, at least one of the cars developed by Cunningham, so the 75 and the 76, was altered to use a V8 engine later on, and this appeared also in the Japanese GT Championship. With its interesting history and fantastic looks, overall another awesome car to add to the collection, and I am very happy to be able to display it here. Now we're moving into something somewhat different here and I don't have a year for this but I'm fairly certain it will be between the Nissan and the next car so I'm putting it here. This is a Railwelt Begriff and nowhere on the internet tells you how to pronounce that properly. Modified Porsche 930 produced by our friends at Ixo. We'll just say RWB from now on because that's more simple and that's what most people say. And it supposedly translates to Rough Weld Concept. The company was started by a famous Japanese tuner, Akira Nakai-san, and he built the very first RWB Porsche from a crashed 911 turbo that he purchased when a customer bought it into the garage he worked at. RWB do modifications for all sorts of Porsches from the 930s through to more modern 993s. This one here is sporting a throwback livery to the 935K3 and is actually based in Austria from what I can find. I have a few of these in my collection now and whilst they're not specifically race cars I kind of allow it as they do have the nice livery and they also do run on a sort of gentleman driver's cup called the Idler's Cup which typically runs in Japan although being from Austria this one's most likely never seen that. Either way I love wide bodies and wicked styling and this one is something a little bit unique compared to the sort of models that I generally collect so it's in my collection along with a few others. And we come on to the final model of today's video and this is a model by Spark. It's the 2021 McLaren F1 MCL 35M. And this is the version that was driven by Lando Norris to third in the Emilia Romana Grand Prix, previously just known as the Imola Grand Prix. When you see the transition from the RWB 930 to the MCL 35M, that really demonstrates just how large Formula One cars have become these days. This particular one is over 5.4 meters long, which puts it nearly as long as your average Rolls Royce, which does affect the car's ability to traverse tracks like Monaco, but that's all in the name of speed, which Formula One is all about. The MCL 35M was actually pretty much a straight development of the MCL 35 as the 2020 regulations were extended into 2021 to allow teams more time to build out the 2022 cars with the big rule changes. In terms of the model, this one unfortunately came without the Velo decals applied, which I later found out was e-cigarettes, which is presumably why they weren't on there from manufacture. They were somewhat of a pain to apply, especially on the front wing, but it's turned out reasonably nice in the end. This is by far my most modern F1 car at the moment and I'm not a massive fan of F1 right now but I wanted one of the McLarens, the more modern McLarens because I do enjoy the fact that they've gone back to the classic orange and blue livery that they first started out with in the 60s and 70s and whilst the teams had its ups and downs they are starting to get back into a run of form at the moment which is good to see. Again overall a well produced car by Spark and I'm happy to have it in my collection and hopefully it will soon be joined by a couple more of the more modern F1 cars that I mostly enjoy the liveries of. So that's the end for this video. Apologies that it's taken a little while to get an old one out, but they do tend to take a little bit of time to make with the editing and everything. But I'll hopefully be back soon, probably with some 80s touring cars next. So I hope you all have a good day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.